In the next couple of videos, I'm going to give you some extra problem for load analysis. Maybe that's a lot more helpful. Okay, this is problem number one. This is your homework, basically. And the problem that you were given was that your loads are actually applied here in a, from a location to this location. And we call this Q. And so the first thing you have to do is shift this to the, cent to the center plane, to the centroid, right? I moved it here. If I'm shifting this at a distance, let me change my colors. If I'm di shifting this at a distance uh, one inch, that's what it says, okay? Uh, because the distance from here was one inch, and this was also one inch. So all I have to do is shift this to the center. But if I shift it, if you realize there is a moment, right? This is creating a moment about this in this direction. So if it's creating a moment about this, in, it's creating a moment in this direction about the X plane, we can replace that with a big arrow like that, with double arrows going inside. Okay? So that's what these arrows mean. And the value of this distributed moment then would be mx is a distributed torque moment of x will be q of x multiplied by 1. Okay? And you can see that there has to be a minus sign because this is going in this direction. Okay, or you don't have to worry about the minus sign. That's what I typically do. I don't worry about the minus sign because I just put the arrows in the directions that they actually go. Okay, that was the problem that you were asked to do. And uh, Q of X, uh, let's say Q of X is equal to uh, 100 minus X. Okay, let's suppose this is the value of the function that you have, it's Q of X. So then this will be 100 minus X. Okay, so this will be your M of X. And then just remember that for your real problem, your P of Y of X is nothing else than minus q of x. Okay? So uh, hopefully this part is now understand and understandable. Everything is shifted to the centroid. Okay? This is actually collinear here. And under this assumption that this is, n this is not significantly thick, where I can just assume that this acts right in the center, I can avoid a further complication by adding another moment there. And that was the intent of the problem. Um, so your problem then basically reduces as follows. So you have, let's call, uh, so you have this Q of X here. And now my problem is to find this torque. I want to find this torque such that from here to here, I have exactly zero torque, okay? The torque has to be zero in this section. In other words, if I plot MXX, MXX should be zero. Remember, I have pins because I have pins. At the pin, I have to make sure that my, uh, my moment is counteracted somewhere inside here, okay? To do that, I'm going to do a free body diagram. I'm going to do a simple summation of, uh, I'm going to do a summation in MXX is equal to zero. That's the only thing I need to do, and I'm going to assume this is positive. So if I remove all the loads from my problem, the only, uh, I don't need to include any of the transverse loads, but transverse, lo transverse loads don't uh, cause any moments now. 
The only problem I have is I got the point moment here in the middle, then I have the distributed moments all the way across here. I have all these distributed moments, and you can see that in your problem, uh, this only has transfers, right? There are transverse loads uh, that go in this direction, up or down, depending on your take, but they don't affect my moment, so I don't need to include them in my, uh, my summation of moments. So if I did that, you can see that you're going to get uh, plus t, okay, we got to call this t, and minus, and minus, I believe that this was L over 2, L, M of x, D of x, okay? And then this particular moment, um, let's say this is 10, okay? Uh, so that would give you is equal to zero. So if I did that, I find that my t is equal to L over two to L m of x, d of x. This is uh, 10, so this would be 5 to 10. m of x will be 100 minus x, 100 minus x, d of x. So I can integrate this, the integra integral will give me x minus x squared over 2, 5 to 100. And after you're done with the whole integration, you get, you can pause the video if you want. This is the math. This is the answer for my balancing torque. So then what we are really trying to say here is that my whole problem that I have here this problem that I have created, this is the same as having the value here is minus 437.5. The value of this is mx is equal to just very quick. I seem like I cannot get my math right. Um, this answer should be. 487.5, just positive, okay? So with that said, your t, with that said, your t is equal to 487.5. This is equal to 100 minus x. This is equal to mx is also 100 plus x in that direction. So we are basically ready to end this value. Did I give a value for this? Let's, uh, let's say this has a value. Um, hundred. And let's suppose it's acting at 45 degrees. Okay, that was the case, then I can decompose this in two values. So this is the same as taking two loads here. This was a roller, by the way. 
and the value here will be seventy point seven. Seventy point seven. That's the value here. So now we're going to start and do all our section cuts. How many section cuts do I need in this problem? I need two section cuts. I'm going to need a section cut here. I'm going to need a section cut there. I can see that there's no discontinuities here. Okay, and I only have one discontinuity there. But let's do one load at a time. The first load I want to do the section cuts for, I want to find what my equation n of x is. I want to find n of x. Okay, so basically the whole idea is if you want to do this separately, you can take your entire problem, strip it, any of the loads that applied. Uh, because you can see that none of your equations of nxx depends on any other loads, right? Your nx was equal to nxx x1 minus x1 p of x d of x of x. This is only a function of p of x. It's not a function of your torque, it's not function of your transverse load, it's not function of your shear, it's not function of your moments. So I can basically just redo my whole problem and say I'm going to solve for this problem. And the only loads I have in the axial direction is 70.7 .7, as in, in, in this example. So I don't have any discontinuities here, right? I do have one discontinuity right there because I have to keep that discontinuity. So if I did a free body now, okay, the only free body that you have in this problem in the x direction would be a reaction force x1, and I have my load here 70.7. .7. So if I do a summation in x, you can find that rx minus 70.7 .7 is equal to 0. So that gives you Rx is equal to 70.7. .7. So now we can go ahead and we can solve for this. So my problem, my new problem that I'm actually trying to solve for, this is 70.7. .7. And this goes in this direction, 70.7. .7. And uh, this is my uh, discontinuity that I have to keep in mind. So if I have to make, first of all, the first section cut I do is right here. Just to see what happens at uh, nxx, 0 plus. Okay, I have my load here, 70.7. .7. So if I take a summation of x, nxx at 0 is equal to 0. So that gives you nxx 0 plus is equal to minus 70.7 .7 pounds. That is the initial value of my load at the beginning, right here at the initial point. So now, this is for my section cut number one. And if I use my equations, nxx1 of x would be nxx0 plus minus 0 to x p of x d of x. In my problem, I do not have any distributed load in the x direction, so this will be zero. So your uh, your nxx will be a constant value, 70.70 pounds. Okay. So now if we continue, So now I found what my load actually looks like in my first cut, right? 
on this cut right here. So nxx is equal to of x is equal to seven minus 70.7 pounds. Now I want to know what my nxx looks in the second part. It's going to be identical, but just for uh, for practice sake, I can do a small cut right here, and that cut is going to look as follows. This is my positive nxx at zero plus. Uh, sorry, uh, what was it? Five, five plus. Um, and then this is the value. This value, nxx one evaluated at five. This is two. This is what I'm looking for. So if I evaluate that, this gives me minus 70.7. So now if I do my free body diagram, this goes in the minus direction. So this is minus nxx one five evaluated at five plus nxx two at five plus is equal to zero. And so nxx phi, uh, nxs of section two is phi plus is equal to nxx five, and the value is minus 70.7. You can see it from here, pounds. Okay, now that we have found this, now we can go and we can find your last segment. And 2 of x is equal to nxx 2 evaluated at 5 plus minus 5x p of x d of x. I don't have p of x in my problem. Then this becomes this value minus 70.70 .70 pounds, okay? So basically, you can do a last sanity check. You could do a small free body diagram here, okay? And make sure that makes sense. And if I did that, I have a load applied here, external load, 70.7. .7. We know that. And I have NXX2 evaluated at 10. So that would be minus NXX2, 10 is equal to uh, minus 70.70 .70 is equal to 0. So that means he's saying that uh, minus nxx2 evaluated at 10 has to be 70.7. Now, from the previous chart, we saw that nxx2 is equal to minus 70 evaluated at 10 will still be constant. So if I plug this in here, minus, minus 70.7 is equal to 70.7 minus minus becomes plus. So this is saying that 70.7 .7 is indeed equal to 70.7. .7. So your answer is correct. So if you're going to plot this, the plot for the nxx will be minus and will be constant all over across. This is x, this is nxx. Being this to 0.5, the midpoint. Okay, so we can do the same thing now. We can do for the torque. For the torque, we can strip everything and only keep my torque values, but that's what I really need. I know that my torque value was 487.5, and then I had distributed torque all the way across. That's the only thing I have in my problem. Okay, and this distributed torque is mx is equal to um, the value of the distributed torque was 100 minus x. Okay, so let's start doing our section cuts. So if I start with my first section cut here, 
I start my first section cut here, that would basically give me I need to know what my MXX at 0 plus is equal to. Now, if I do my free body diagram here, you find that MXX at 0 plus is equal to actually 0. OK, so uh, this is sec segment 1. So that means that MXX1 at x is equal to MXX1 at 0 plus minus at 0, sorry, 2x distributed moment MXX. Um, we don't have any distributed moments there. That goes to 0, so this is equal to 0. That means that your first segment has to have a moment of this 0 torque. It makes sense. It says nothing is applied here, so all the way 0. Go to the next segment. Okay. We do it right there. And we can do a uh, free body right here. I put that particular location. I have the only difference is now I have a point torque, which I have to keep. That has a value of 487.5. MXX2 at 5 plus. And I need to know what my MXX1 evaluated 5 is. Okay. So from my problem, from my previous slide, we saw that my MXX1 was 0. It's a constant value. So this is 0. So now when I solve this, I get minus MXX1 plus 485, 7.5, sorry, this is a torque, double arrow, uh, plus MXX2 at 5 plus is equal to 0. And the value of this guy was 0. So I get MXX2, 5 plus, is equal to minus 487.5. Okay, so this is the value of your, this is inch pound. Okay, now one thing that you have to be very careful, all your distributed loads were in this direction. Okay, all your distributed loads were in this direction. So therefore, your, you have to watch out when you use the equation. I'm going to explain that in a minute. So your equation now is MXX2 at 5 plus. Remember, this is 5. X is equal to 5. Uh, minus 5 of 2X. M of X. D of X. Now, one thing you have to make sure that you are aware of the way the equations were derived, this mx, this mx is actually minus the value that you get there. 100 minus x. Why? Because the derivation for this was done for a positive, for a positive distributed moment that goes like this in this direction. When you compare this direction with this direction, signs are opposite. So um, M of uh, MX is actually minus. You have to make sure that's very clear. You always have to look at your positive sense. Your positive is in the positive direction. This is what your positive looks like. This is going in the opposite. That's why we have a minus sign there. So now your question, this is minus 487.5 minus 5 of X minus 
100 minus x, d of x, and we can integrate this, and you will get, after doing some math, doing your full integration, you can pause to the video and write this if you want to. You find that your, your, your uh, moment, your torque moment is equal to this. And uh, I just realized I made a small mistake. This would be 950. Um, and I apologize for that. This value right here should be 462.5. This should be 462.5. I made a small math mistake. So please fix this to 4. 62.5. This is 462.5. 462.5. Same here. Same everywhere that you see this. This would be 462.5. And yes, just have to make sure you go back, you fix this value. It's 462.5. Um, so if I evaluate this now at 10, right, at 10 minus, that's actually evaluating all this at 10, you will see that you get actually zero. And it should be zero because at the end, I don't have any torque applied. So the value that I get for this guy here, mx2 at 10, has to equal to zero because there's no point a torque supply here. So I found this uh, moment, how this moment distribution, that looks kind of odd, it looks different, but this is what your equation should look like, and it's only from 5 to 10. So if you were to plot this, your plot will look something is completely negative, is 0, then jumps there, it's almost linear, but it actually has some curvature to it and goes to zero. This is the plot for MXX for this problem that we just made up. Okay, so if I move on to the next part, now note that as I'm doing my shear moment diagram, however, I can separate my problems and then here. What I have to do in this part here is I have my distributed loads, okay? Just remember, again, when I do all my diagrams, I have to use PY is equal to minus of Q. So it's minus of 100 minus X, same as X minus 100. Just keep that in your mind. Um, I don't have, I have a point, uh, I have a point load right here, going downwards, 70.7, .7, and I have reaction loads, which I need to find. Okay, now, when I'm doing my shear, I cannot take my shear separate from my moment, I have to do them both. I can do shear first, and then I can do moment, but I need to keep the same diagram. Why? Because if you look at your moment diagram, your, your moment of MZZ of X is equal to MZZ at X1 minus X1 BY1 of X D of X. So you can see that it's a function of Vy, so therefore we have to do the Vy, we have to do the problem together. Okay? So to do this problem, I have Ry1 plus Ry2 plus this distributed load 5 to 10.
is going negative, it's going downwards, has a value of 100 minus x, d of x, minus 70.7 .7 is equal to 0. So ry1 plus iy2 is equal to You can do the math. This is your first equation. For the second equation, we need to have we need to create some moments. And the moment is going to come from here. I need to know the location where this is. It's a lot easier by finding that x bar. This is x bar. By using the equation I told you, 5 to 10, p y of x dx, 5 to 10, p y dx. So this is going to be, remember there was a minus sign there, 100 minus x times x dx. 0 to 10, this is a 10 by the way, minus 100 minus x d of x. So if you do your integral at top and the bottom, you can show that you will find that the centroid is going to happen at seven point five at, the, at this distance here. You can do the math. So that means my equation now will be if I take a moment about this point, my my equation would be ry1 y2 times 10 minus 70.7 .7 times 10. This is also creating a moment in this direction and it's negative minus d integral 5 to 10 py dx multiplied by 7.5 is equal to 0. So I got two set of equations and I can solve it and the answer for those equations is so from here I find ry2 is equal to 417.55 and so if I plug this inside here I find that IY1 is equal to one hundred and fifteen point six pounds. So now what we have done is we have taken our problem, we have taken this problem, and we have found what your all your loads are, your reaction loads are. That's that's what we are really looking for. And they were both positive, so that means they are both going in this direction. And this was four seventeen point fifty seven. Um, this was 115.6265. Um, okay, so these are the values, and now we can start with our section cuts. I'm going to have two section cuts as usual, one section cut here, another section cut there. So the, my very first section cut, 115.65, this is positive. Positive always goes in this direction. Um, 
well, let's do all this year, then we worry about the moments. Okay, we can do that. We cannot do moments without the shear, but we can do shear without the moments. Um, so if I just did this, we see that Vy at 0 plus, plus, plus 115.62 is equal to 0. So Vy1 at 0 plus is equal to minus 115.62. So that means that Vy1 of x is equal to Vy1 of x of 0 plus minus 0 to x Py dx. There's no distributed loss applied in this segment. So this is actually equal to minus 115.62. It's going to be a constant value. This is Vy1 of x. So now we move on and we're going to do a section, another section cut. Your second section cut is going to be right here. Just above this point. And the reason behind I want to do that section cut is because I'm interested in finding what my Vy is at phi plus. I don't have any point moments applied there. And I want to know this is Vy2. I want to evaluate my Vy1 at 5 or 5 minus, which is all the same. Um, minus. So then this will become Vy2 of 5 plus has to equal to Vy1 at 5 minus. And we found that this was equal to minus. 115.62 pounds. Okay, from here now I can uh, simply do my load diagram at 5 plus minus 5 to x py d of x. Just be again, watch out. The value that you put in here has to be minus Q because this was derived with v, uh, PY positive going upwards. Okay, so that's why this is uh, minus Q. So if I plug the values in here, 1.1562, this is minus 5X minus. 100 minus x d of x. This will give me. So solving for this, simplifying this equation, you get minus 603,112 plus 100 x minus 0.5 x squared. This is your Vy2 of x. And we could do a sanity check at the end of my beam, where I know this value is 417.57. I know that this value is 70.7. And I can see what the value of my F uh, y2 at 10 minus is. So if I evaluate the y2 at 10, I am evaluating this value right here, taking this number and replacing 10. What you can see is that you would get minus 603.12 plus 100 times 10 minus 10 squared divided by 2, and that would give me 346.87.85. Um, so if I take, now if I do a free body diagram here, you see that minus Vy2 minus minus 70.7 plus 417.575 is equal to 0. 
and I replace this value in here that I got here. You see that I get minus 346. I want to check if this is actually 0. 85 minus 70.7 plus 4175 uh, is equal to 0. And actually gives me 0 is equal to 0. So that means that my equation is correct. So if you were to plot this, the plot of this equation is going to look something like this. Starts a negative value, comes somewhere there in the middle. Then there's a very, it's not that much, it's very slight, it's a slight slope, comes there, then comes all the way back down. Okay, so this is the value for your shear. It should be something like this. The next thing we want to do is we want to find your moment. So for your moment, um, the pins never carry moments. So we can do your first section cut. And you can see that there's no moments applied there. MZZ at 1 at 0 plus will be 0. So that means that um, MZZ uh, 1 of x is equal to MZZ 1 at 0 plus minus 0 2x V1 x D of x and V1 if you go back You see that V1 was minus 115. So you can plug that value in there. Because 1 of 115.625. This is 0. So you will get plus 115. 625. 625 times x. This is the value of MZZ1 of x. Okay, now we do another section cut right in the middle at x equal to 5 and what we want to find is mzz2 at 5 plus in the positive sense this is mzz1 at 5 minus Nothing else than MZZ2 at 5 plus will equal to MZZ1 at 5 minus. Okay? And 5 minus is nothing else taking this equation and evaluating in 5. So it gets 115.625 multiplied by 5, and that gives you. Five seventy eight one twenty five. Okay, so now I have this value. Now I can just simply move on to do my next integration. That would be MZZ two at five plus minus five of x VY two of x D of x. VY two is what we just calculated here is this equation that's here okay so mzz2 of x would be this value is this value 5781.25 minus 5 to x minus 63125 
plus 100x minus 0.5x squared d of x and that will give you do all this you find this is 108 plus 603.25 minus 50x squared plus x cubed divided by 6. This is mzz2 of x. So let's suppose I want to use my MATLAB code and I want to plot this. This is how, we, how, we, how I would do it. So I take my folder, I save that, and I'm going to call this extra problem. So now everything that happens in that folder, I don't have to worry about it. Now I go to MATLAB, and I will go to my folder, look for extra problem, open my load diagram. It's called example one, but you don't have to worry about it. Just open it. And now you can, you can change your output if you want to, but it's just an output. I don't care for that. Here, this is just a simple preliminary output. You don't do anything. It just prints out that. It prints that out for you. This is the number of data points I want when I'm plotting. Okay, I'm going to have uh, in this particular example, I got two domains. So I'm going to have a. I have uh, three points. The first point is in half of my beam. The second point is at the end of my beam. And I'm going to do um, two set of data. One set of data is going to plot the first half. The second set of data is going to plot my second half. Okay. So really, what I'm trying to do is I'm taking my MATLAB code and I'm saying do the plots from zero to five. Okay. This is to plot this. I'm going to call x one, and I need to put many, many, many different data points. The more data points I put, the finer the grid. If I make it very coarse, it was, I can give you an example of that. And this is X2. That's where it says I'm going to have many, 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 many points there. That's what this is doing. Okay, And then I need to create a vector. And my convention, the way I develop the code, is to make sure that vector is a, uh, it's not a row vector, it's a column vector. That's why I put a semicolon there. So secondly, all I have to do is now Let's go back and find what our loads were from the beginning. So I solved this, and I found my NXX1 was minus 70. So you have to multiply by ones. Uh, you just cannot put the value in there. You have to multiply so we create a vector for you. Um, so uh, then also I can copy paste. I got two segments. The second segment happens to have the same value. So I put a comma and xx2. Why? Because I got two segments, one and two. You can see the values right here. And x2 is the same value. So now let's the next thing I did here in the problem was to find my torque. So let's go and find the torque. Torque, the first segment is zero. So you still have to multiply by ones. You just put a zero there, okay? And then copy. This is second segment. So you know that you have to add this here, mxx2. And uh, your second segment, your torque, the value of your torque is this, value, this equation. So how do I write this equation in MATLAB? Uh, I will just go. And I would say the second segment is 100 dot x, oops, dot multiply times x one x two, because I am in the second in the second segment minus 0.5 dot multiply x dot x squared, and the reason behind this is. 
this dot is because this is a vector and I have to put x2 okay the last number I had is 950 minus 950 okay so this is how you, you get your torque um, we didn't have uh, MYY we didn't plot this so I am just going to say 0 times 1's and then comma 1 and you still need to add this segment otherwise it will give you an error MYY2 so this is how the code is built you have to give all the values now let's go to uh, I didn't have Z uh, let me just copy this from here we didn't have C or the Z direction BZ1 BZ2 BZ and then now I create the vector that's going to actually plot it BZ1 semicolon BZ2 okay so this is this. Now let's go to VY. The second thing that we found what was VY. We did the problem. We found VY is, is a constant value. So your first VY is constant. I can copy paste this value here. And just replace it for what was it? Minus 115. I just know it's uh, 625. So it's the exact value. Um, okay, and then I even have a second value because we are working on two segments, comma, VY2. Uh, and the second value that you found uh, after you did the whole thing was it's right here. Uh, gives you 603,125 plus 100 dot multiply x. This dot is important in MATLAB um, because this is a vector. Okay, uh, then this gives you minus 0.5 dot multiply x dot squared. And note that I'm working on the second segment, so I need to put x2. If you don't put x2, then it's, it's going to give you an error. So now you can just go ahead and run the plot. Hopefully there are no errors. You change your folder. And then you're going to ask, you say this is inches. Second one doesn't matter. And you wait for your set, it says it's plotting the forces. Wait for a moment, your first plot is done. Now this one is, just give me a second, of course. We did not, uh, we did not add these values. We need to add the value for your moment. As you can see that we didn't add that, so it gave me an error. That's going to find the moment equation. It's right here. So the first moment equation is hundred and fifteen six twenty five dot x one. See, so it's a dot because multiply is in x one. Now the second segment. Your moment is equal to minus twelve oh eight plus six oh three point one twenty five dot x two minus fifty minus fifty multiply x two. I have to put a dot squared uh, and 
plus x2 dot q divided by 6. You can put a dot if you want there, but you don't have to because your 6 is a constant and constants don't necessarily need a dot. Um, so this is what, if I'm not mistaken, this is what, if I wrote it right, you can check the numbers. And now I run this guy right there. One, two, the first one is done, the moment diagram is done, and the combine is done. When your plots are done, then you can click there, right, the, the load, the plots are right there. You can double click here, or you can go to the folder. If you go to the folder, extra problem, all plots. These are all the plots uh, put together. Okay. These are all the plots put together. This is what your shear moment diagram looks like. Your your low diagrams. If you want, oops. Um, give me a sec. If you wanted to see what your forces look like, double click on forces. And these are only the forces. You can see that your VZ, there's nothing in VZ. This is constant and this is VY. Uh, if you wanted to see your loads, if you wanted to see what your moments look like, you can double click on moment. You can see that MYY within a value is again is zero. And this is what this plot looks like. This gives you negative for our sign convention, remember. So this is what your uh, internal load diagrams look like. And I'm hoping that this clarifies your homework. And I encourage that you, you go ahead. I encourage you go ahead and retry the problem number one, your homework one, if you want to. And we can give you some extra bonus points. Maybe this clarifies a lot more.